three. Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. This is our weekly program featuring everything that is coming up in the area's music, arts, and entertainment scene. We will interview local artists, authors, musicians, and even some nationally recognized names who may be performing here in our area. We will have movie reviews and film suggestions from the real dad, Mark Schumann, and etiquette tips from Catherine Michaels. This is your all-access pass, and here are your hosts, Arts and Leisure editor Sally Sanders and our entertainment reporter, Steve Coulter. Welcome to HN Network's Arts and Leisure. I'm your host, Steve Coulter. I'm joined here in the studio with Mark Schumann, our real dad, and Sally Sanders. Good afternoon. We've got a great show uh, ready for you. we got journalism films to talk about and the That's opening right. of James Bond's James latest Bond. installment, <laughs> Spectre. Oh. But we're going to start with the late, great passing of Maureen O'Hara. That's right. Who yes, died at 95 years old? She was right. born in Dublin, died in Boise, Idaho. And, what a journey! And had a fabulous career in between. And how many of us of a certain age remember our first glimpse of Maureen O'Hara as Haley Mills and Haley Mills' mother in The Parent, the Parent Trap. Trap? It's one of the first movies I ever saw. I remember her first from Miracle on 34th well, Street. Well, but that was, but that was a. There's something about Maureen O'Hara in The Parent Trap when she's walking one of the Haley Mills through the <laughs> park and she's singing the song and it sounded like this song has nothing to do with this movie. My character doesn't really have much to do with this movie, but I'm lovely and I look good in color and so you're going to pay spend attention money to, to me. watch yeah, me. Exactly. I, that I, was kind of her career. I was totally unmoved by The Parent Trap. Oh, I'm sorry. Sally. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sally. What about The Quiet Man? Love oh, I love yeah. the quiet oh, But if you go back to Miracle on 34th Street, she had such a, a, a sense of presence and such a power. And yes. she made that career woman, a very contemporary character, really work in 1947. Do you completely believe that Maureen O'Hara was the career woman who staffed out the taking care of her little girl? And was a scientific person who right. believed only in what she could see. That's right. And, and, she knew. and she made it real. And if she hadn't made it real, we never would have believed that Santa Claus needed to be real <laughs> to, to give Natalie Wood the chance to have a happy ending. And to make Maureen melt just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But that was in black and white. And it was really when the movies turned to color that Maureen O'Hara found her her place because she had that she's a gorgeous starlet. red hair yeah, and those I was gonna beautiful say a starlet green and scarlet. eyes and she was just made for the Technicolor camera. Yeah, she did some some pirate films and she westerns, did westerns, westerns with John Wayne, John yeah. Wayne. They were a great match. Besides she, her great looks, uh, talk a little bit about her becoming one of the first actresses that really developed these stronger roles for females. She, she was always the stronger woman. Right. And I think that. that it's interesting because she was never what you would consider a character actress. She was not going to play the great historical figures. Many times she was the supporting figure. My favorite of her performances is a film that is little remembered today called Spencer's Mountain from 1963. She's well into her 40s by then, and at that point you were over the hill oh, at 40. is this 40. the Waltons? This is the one that later ah. became the Waltons, and it's Henry Fonda, and she's just the really strong-willed mother who holds the family together when the father's kind of wild and the kids are going crazy and and they live on a mountain and they, out in the and middle of nowhere. And she just is, she's so grounded. I'll have to look that one oh, up. You should because yeah. she's, she's very real and she makes us believe in this woman in a much more down-to-earth way than later on television. In I Walton. think she said her favorite, her favorite role though was the one in, in The Quiet Man. Well, that and that's such a beautiful film, and it's also it's very interesting seeing John Wayne play that role. Oh, yeah. I just watched that for the first time earlier yeah. this yeah. year. It's one of his strongest performances. Oh, yeah. Very, yeah. very much against type. Yeah, you know, her passing it just—it's it, the end of an era. We're, we we don't have many stars from that period left, and and th that was a period when the stars were big, and we didn't necessarily care what movie they were in but they were in another movie yes, and we could go, go see, see them. them and there was a there was a routine to it and, and I think that um, it, it's always sad when someone dies. Now you mentioned uh, her being in her 40s and how that's considered over oh, the hill in Hollywood. At that time. It's still kind of a problem that we see in the industry today. Maggie Gyllenhaal can't even get cast to be a 38 year old when she plays she is yeah. 38. Uh, talk a little bit about you know, uh, us as a culture and how we've progressed or not progressed in terms of actresses leading these powerful roles? Well, I think that it, it, it all depends on who's buying the tickets. 
There has been a great move this year for mature women to get good parts on screen. That's great for the mature women. That isn't so great if I'm in my late 30s, early 40s, which is a little bit of an awkward period because the parts could be played by someone much younger. Yeah. I think that you look at an actress like Sandra Bullock who's been able to ride through that pretty smoothly. Yes, very smoothly. But not everybody has that, that good fortune. Even Meryl Streep, who we now revere, had a tough time when she was in her mid-40s finding the parts. And, and Meryl's she, back at it again this weekend with Suffragette. With Suffragette, and, and anything she does is, is wonderful. But she had a tough time when she was going through that certain period. And she tried comedy, and she then tried, kind of reinvented herself with the River Wild, and, and, and was trying Mama, to find yeah. her new rhythm. So it's, it's tough. It, it, it's always been tough. But I think today... At least we're getting some things for the older actresses. That It's really nice. We're going to have a slot at the Oscars called the Actress Over 60 slot. Oh, and it's oh. either going to be Lily Tomlin or Blythe Danner. One of those. Is, yeah, Blythe is Danner Judy Dench really... something this year? Uh, no, but she's it's a few years since Philomena. So. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit I'm glad you mentioned her. the Oscar race for no, Best Actress. We've got there. a competitive one where Kate Blanchett's going to need to either choose Carol or the new one that's coming out this week, Truth. I, I, I rather believe, having seen them both, I, I, I think that Carol is such an ultimate Kate Blanchett performance. And what makes it so interesting, I think it's a fascinating film, I can't wait until it opens, but what makes it such an interesting performance is she teases us in Carol by saying, I'm going to give you a hint of what I did in this film and what I did in this film, oh, so it's but like a it's compilation something of her, very, yeah. very new. Uh, it, it's a very unique per portrayal, and uh, I think the, the film is exquisite, and she's especially good. And you got to good. see that at the New York yeah. Film Festival it's, it's, last it's, month. It's especially good. I like Truth a lot. I think she's very good in Truth. I think that as we look at journalism films, it has something missing that I can't quite figure out. Still thinking about it. Is it not entertaining enough? It's or? very entertaining. Yeah. It moves quickly. What you don't get, and journalism movies are funny, we have to believe that those are really journalists hungering after the story. Doing the work. We do. And when yeah. you think about all the president's men, one of the great stories yeah, of sleep at movies yeah. is how Alan J. Pacula, the great director of All the President's Men, imported the trash from the Washington <laughs> Post to the set because he wanted that set to feel real. So he brought the trash. So you just, I mean, they're really like, they're like, that's the trash. And, and you don't feel that? With with the uh, sets and uh, truth? No, no. Uh, I never felt that that was authentic. I mean, trash. from what I've heard about the other film we're going to be mentioning, which is Spotlight, oh, yeah. they they went to the extent of having all of the people who were portrayed in the film on set a lot uh, of the it, time, and they would do as as much as like saying, no, the phone has to be over here because right. she has to be able to take notes. And, and, and you and and I think that detail is what separates great journalism films from ones that leave something wanting. There, there was an excellent film a few years ago called Shattered Glass that, that had that real sense of realism, whereas there was one a few years ago called State of Play that felt a little bit artificial. Oh, that movie was so yeah, stale. It felt artificial. Uh, the, the old the Ron British Howard. The series was, was yeah, much yeah. better. But, but Truth takes a very interesting chapter in American history when there were questions about George W. Bush and his military service. What you don't get is that sense of hunger that investigative reporters bring to their work. You just don't get that sense of curiosity that we got in All the President's Men, that we got in The Insider, the great Michael Mann film, also about 60 Minutes. And so because we don't get that sense of hunger, we don't have nearly the, the disappointment when the hunger leads to perhaps some bad decisions on the, on the part of the reporters. Now, Blanchett plays Mary Mapes in her role in Truth, and uh, Robert right. Redford's playing Dan Rather. How, do, how is their chemistry together? And how, is Tober, great. how is Tober Grace fit in there, too? Oh, uh, Tober Grace, is, he, he's, he's, he's great. He's kind of the wild, young kid who doesn't follow the rules. You have Dennis Quaid is kind of the old, right. salty guy. Yeah. Uh, what's interesting about Redford, and I, I would watch Redford read the yellow pages, to use that old expression. He's, he, he, he's really having a good time. It's not a big part. The film isn't about him. He doesn't cast the same impression that Christopher Plummer did when he played Mike Wallace in The Insider. You don't get that same sense of presence. But he has the voice. But he has the voice. He has the, he has the look. Him. has the folksiness. I, I, I do really like the relationship that's established between Redford and Blanchett and 
and there's a, kind of a father-son thing, father-daughter thing going on, and, and she has some shadings of concern about her own father. So that works really well. And, and Kate Blanchett is, is excellent. She, she is the lead in the movie. She is. Correct, it, right? it is her, it's her movie. And so who's the lead in Spotlight now? Is it more Michael Keaton I've, or is it more just pure ensemble? With yeah, I think it's an ensemble piece. Yeah. I haven't seen it. They, right. they keep mentioning Michael Keaton as a supporting actor sure. contender for oh, really? it. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he portrays Robbie, uh, I forget his last name. Who? who Robinson. Robinson. Who's the, who is like leads the that lead group, of yeah. that Spotlight group. And yeah. You've got Mark Ruffalo, Rachel McAdams. And apparently Mark Ruffalo, who's, who's such a, an entertaining actor to watch, is quite good. Uh, the word uh, uh, is, and it opens soon in the city, is, is that Spotlight does dig into that detail of the reporter's work that we love in films about journalism. Well, the reporters so themselves wait. were very excited because they wanted that, that right. sort of tediousness to be prepared. Right. portrayed and of course the filmmakers didn't want to make the tediousness yeah, tedious. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. going to be too so boring it was, if it's right. too much no taking. But they but they did get they did get the the kind of the granular detail of like going to the city clerk's office and and pushing through all the layers it's of It's not pretty work. I do it no. on a regular basis. <laughs> but so I mean, let me tell you. I think we need to have a movie about this newspaper. <laughs> ah, yeah. I think we do. But it, it but it, it gets into that that really difficult work that has to be done and maybe wasn't done so much by Dan Rather's crew um, to but, really make sure that you've got the goods before you go uh, with it. But you, what you don't get is is even enough of a sense of how hard they worked and maybe the wrong turns they took or the shortcuts that they took. Yeah. When you think about, uh, I think about broadcast news, which is one of my favorite mm, films. Yeah. I think we've and, got an image of that. And, and there is that great sequence when they're trying to get that story on the air. And yeah, I just remember Brooks. the Joan Cusack visual of when she has to slide underneath the filing cabinet. <laughs> and it's like, we're going to get this on the air. And you... And, and there was such urgency, and yeah. I never feel in truth that there's urgency. They're they're pretty casual about, yeah, we only have a minute to go, but we're going to make it. it. It doesn't feel like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? I, another film that came to mind was The China Syndrome, and you felt such a sense of urgency with Jane Fonda's character, and she had to get that story on the air. I, I don't quite feel that, and I think because I don't feel that, the letdown when it turns south isn't quite as strong as I wanted. Yeah. Now, would you agree that you've obviously said detail is an important element detail. to a journalism so, movie, but would tempo be an important part? Yeah. You can't let it just sit and fester. No, and it, it has, it to, has have to have a speed. sense of urgency. Yeah. If, you, if you go back to one of the great journalism films of all time, His Girl Friday, with, <laughs> with, with, with Rosalind Russell and Cary Grant, they don't even let each other finish their sentences. It's <laughs> all this overlapping dialogue. So it's there. like an Aaron Sorkin script. It, it is. And, and in fact, Aaron Sorkin... It's a lot of comedy built you, you, in, yeah. you, you want, in fact, you kind of wish that you could have a mashup of of uh, of the, the the newsroom and and truth because the newsroom on television gave you such a real sense of behind the scenes even yeah. though it was all fabricated yeah there were people ducking in that show all the and, time and, running and in it just while gave he's you doing like, the news we got to get this yeah. on the air this is our this is our mission and, and and you don't quite get that and i i i wanted that well. one of my main questions is you got these two movies that are coming out almost simultaneously in the same year why is 2015 this kind of year for journalism movies? Well, you also have the Sandra Bullock movie, which is about PR and kind of yeah. media. There's a lot of media movies that and, are coming out. Why and, is and, that and, so? And, and they're not making any money. So the, the, the trouble is you can't foresee what people are going to, to want. Who would have thought that we would be talking about the box office disappointment of Steve Jobs after it got incredible reviews. Truth, I think there is concern about because it didn't do as well in its initial engagements. The Sandra Bullock film hasn't done well. Oh, it These got panned, serious yeah. films, and it may be that we're just in an escapist mode and that The Martian Oh, the Martian. Just so captured our imagination. Thank you for bringing and that into the conversation. And now we're waiting for James Bond that we don't have time for these serious films. So it'll be interesting to see with uh, some of the ones, because we have a lot of serious films that are getting ready to open. We yeah. have the lovely film Brooklyn. We have Room. We have Room, it looks and, really good. And Suffragette. We have some really serious movies still to yeah, come. Yeah, I think the mood may be anti-serious right now. Yeah. And I think and there's so much on no the television right now. No one wants to go right see Spotlight, now. which yeah. by the way, I don't know if the audience is aware, it's about the Boston Globe's uh, 2004 right. reporting of the uh, Catholic Church scandal with the priests. So that's going to be very, I, I'm really excited. When I'm I first I'm read too. about it's that movie great, at the beginning of the year, cast. I put it right up there with yeah. and, all and, the and, other and, movies. And, and these, these films about journalists, in addition to celebrating what this profession is all about, <laughs> 
they do highlight important moments in our history that we need to oh, yeah. remember. Absolutely. And you, I, I, I think All the President's Men is required viewing because it not only captures what those people did, but it captures the mood of a, of a nation felt deceived. And, and, and it, it locks that emotional content of that, of that period. So Mark's pick for journalism movies, All the President's Men. Number one. Sally, Absolutely. what about you? And The Insider, I like and it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Spotlight. Just from, yeah. from oh, what yeah. I've heard about it, I, so I'm going to reserve judgment on my yeah. favorite Apparently journalism Apparently it's not film. an easy film to watch. Uh, it, of it, course not. Um, the, the subject it matter brings is it, very Yeah, it brings intense. it all back. Yeah. Uh, one movie we talk about, I feel like, every other week on this show, Good Night and Good Luck. We'd be remiss yeah. not to mention that as an absolute must-see if you're in the mood for a journalism movie. Edward R. Murrow, right. sure. absolutely brilliant movie. Right. Broadcast News, you mentioned. Frost Nixon is another one. That one doesn't have the tempo that we were talking about. It, it really sits yeah. and, and is patient with what it, it's doing. It is, and because it originated as a play, it does, I think, reveal Has, its, yeah. its theatrical origin in the way it develops the story. But it, but it does shed light on what could have been something that... Uh, it we, works we didn't very know well for yeah. the subject and matter mainly it's because of the performances, yeah. I think. Yeah. And before we head off to the break, my recommendation yeah. is, I know it's a stretch because it's technically a, a music movie, but Almost Famous is about a reporter who's working yeah, for Rolling sure Stone. Yes. Sure it is. And sure uh, to draw good. the connection, Billy Crudup, who's one of my favorite actors, who uh, hasn't been able to score a great role in a very long time. There he is on the screen. I love that shot. That is Him a, talking to Francis McDormand on the phone. And like, your kid's going to be yeah. just fine, Mom. You don't <laughs> have to worry. Oh, that's my, one of my favorite scenes of all time. I love that so much. And, and he's it, in he's in spotlight this weekend, so I'm really excited it's, to see him. It, it's not surprising that there have been these great films about journalism because it is a it is a great career, and <laughs> it is a career that puts you right in the middle of whatever is happening, whether it's in your own hometown or in a, 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 on a, a larger, larger canvas. Space. Yeah, it's, but it's people who want to find things out. Yeah, it is. It's a great place to be curious. It's been something I've been doing for a while now. It's a big part of my identity. When we come back yeah. from the break, we're, all, we're going to talk about another big part of my identity. Yes. I, I don't know about wow. how you guys feel, but James, James Bond has been, ever since I was seven, I feel like I've been watching James oh, Bond. Oh, it's ever movies. since I was excited, seven. Very excited for opening weekend of Spectre. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk about James Bond. Darien Sports Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darien Sports Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariensport.com. In Pound Ridge since 1993, the Wine Connection is one of America's best wine shops. Visit our beautiful store for the greatest in wine and knowledgeable service. With wonderful values from around the world to collectibles for your cellar, we are your one-stop source. Visit our online shop at wineconn.com and make sure to sign up for email updates. With great offers, new arrivals, and special events, don't miss all the action at The Wine Connection, including tastings every weekend. The Wine Connection, located at 32 Westchester Avenue, Pound Ridge, New York. Do you do a lot of running around but get nowhere when you're buying a car? Visit Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram for the one-stop buying experience and stop spinning your wheels. Back to school means back to busy, and Stewart's Market can save you precious time by stocking all of your favorite essentials under one roof. For a healthy start to school, we have all the ingredients. Walter Stewart's, your family-owned fresh local market, 229 Elm Street and at stewartsmarket.com. Does buying a car leave you feeling like you're chasing your tail? Head straight to Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram and take car buying in a whole new direction. Alliance. We are an industry leader in coordinating transportation for large events such as corporate road shows, conferences, and special events. Our team of experts understands the dynamics and logistics of high pressure situations and complex arrangements, all within a rapidly changing environment. Since 1999, we have added charter jets, event management, and personal protection to our range of services. Mention this ad for $25 off your next round trip reservation. Alliance and you. Together, we can achieve the extraordinary. 
or alliancelimo.com. It's time. It's time. There's something about Thanksgiving. Well, you should be saying hello. <laughs> no, there's something. My name is Bond. James Bond. Thank you very much. There's something about Thanksgiving and movies at Thanksgiving that to me means James Bond. Not that they've all opened at this time of year, but there's just something about Thanksgiving that, that means James Yeah, the November Bond season is, yeah. is perfect for it. And not right. associating with turkeys in any way. No, no, but some of them have been turkeys. And, oh, and, yeah. And they're, they're Are we getting to the turkeys already? There, there tends to be James Bond. Being, I've been a fanatic since they were all released for the first time, so I go back that long. But there are good ones, there are good ones, there are good ones, there are bad ones. There are good ones, there are bad ones. And they always seem to kind of have a really good one and then one that isn't quite so good right after it. What makes these films such an event? Over 50 years, these, these, now it's 50 plus years. Skyfall, the last one, came out on the 50th anniversary of Dr. No. It, it is truly an event though, right? If you go back and you look at the old ones, we watch the old ones for the same reason we watch the new ones. Part of it is we want to see the gadgets because we love to see what they've invented. Part of it is we know that he's going to get through in the end, so we want to see just how threatened he is. <laughs> and part of it is because there's a clarity in the conflict. It, 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 there are good they were guys born and in the Cold guys. War, yeah, I was and so say, we it's still all... like to play with that Cold War stuff. But there's a there's a clarity in the conflict. Our film ingredients definitely have to include the Russians. Yeah, yeah there's all, and it's like oh, like when Goldeneye came out, and it was such a throwback to the old ones, because oh, good, we can have the Russians be our enemy again, <laughs> and and that's where these films were were born, and and they're, they're ultimate Cold War films. So every time the world gets a little bit colder. These films become suddenly relevant. Well, do again. you, They're do great you fun. think that it, it they've drawn large audiences also because you have eye candy for both men and women? I don't you think know. That's, yeah. that's a, a, I mean, I don't there know. is some sort of sexual really. appeal. For yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, but Roger he, Moore, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and, and really um, Timothy Dalton. You know, I, I think that. I, I think it's it, they're very recreational movies. They're 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 great fun. They're 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 predictable, but they're surprising. And we know that it's going to be a great ride and on a roller coaster. So generally, and they're so well. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're classy. Yeah. There have been some real turkeys. Should we just go into the turkeys? I feel like I, we've mentioned I, I it enough. Just, for whatever reason, I kept going <laughs> back to um, uh, I, a view to a kill. Oh, me, that's on my list too. Uh, and, and I think about it's that such a film silly because one. I, I lived in San Francisco at the time that it was made. I mean, look at and Christopher for, Walken's hair right and, there. And, and for a month, <laughs> I would leave work at night, and I would like have to stop and wait for them to do whatever they were doing on oh, Market no. Street. And I was so tired. And then that sequence is all of ninety seconds long. I, I think it is the ultimate in a in a Bond turkey because it oh, has. What about the late Pierce uh, Brosnan? Outrageously exaggerated characters and yeah. ridiculous sequences and Roger and, Moore and was kind of over the hill, over the hill at that point and, you know I think that that what works is when we see Bond's vulnerability the same thing that makes Daniel Craig so good as James Bond That's is what made Sean Connery so good is that he's larger than life but he's very human and and the the whole relationship between Bond and M that was so beautifully established uh, I think gives Bond a humanity so we like him for his humanity but we also like him for being a little bit superhuman at the same time. So that attracts you most about this upcoming one how they've kept building on this character ever since Daniel Craig has taken right. over he, right. these movies they're not separate they are all right. one of the same storyline so this is the fourth one where we keep seeing this character build and the third one, Skyfall, was just so, I thought it was, it was one so, of the best of excellent. all time. It was excellent. And, and it, it had layers of depth that we wouldn't necessarily expect with a Bond film. I think they've learned that to keep this franchise alive, you can't act like you're pressing the restart button every time. Right. You just can't. And you do have to acknowledge the films before, partly because we have so many other somewhat similar franchise films out there. This is more like a British series, you know. It, you can see this being kind of a masterpiece theater 
idea where you have you have a premise and you have characters yeah. that carry through. Downton and Bond. Yeah, Downton Bond. But the, you know, it, it moves along. There's storylines that continue. It's not it's not cut off at the end of a right. story. Right, and I think that it's stronger for that. You don't have to start that. new. Right, it's stronger for that. It used it's to be familiar. It used to be frustrating when all of a sudden he would have a happy ending or a Bond happy ending at the end of one film, and the next film opens and. It's like no no mention at all. He's that jumping he, yeah. off a cliff yeah. into no shark, mention at all. Like what shark happened? Infested water. What happened to that? Yeah, in, Bond in girl. Specter now, you you really do get that carryover, right? right. It's it's yeah. And oh I, yeah, it's been I, building I, I, ever since the first one of this new series, and, I, and it's also paying homage to uh, from Ru from Russia with Love as well, one of the first ever is Bonds. Just oh, so good. Oh yes. yeah. And in fact, anyone who who loves James Bond films of the new era owes it to yourself to go back and. Watch Thunderball and From Russia with Love and Goldfinger. Goldfinger the, the, yeah. That's the trilogy. So your what would be on your top list? Your favorite Bond movie? Probably Thunderball. Really? Yeah. All right. I think that. I gave Thunderball I think honorable per, mention. I think that that piranha sequence in yeah, Thunderball yeah. is about as yeah. good as life gets. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't get really much good. more entertaining than that. Yeah, I think for totally over the top, I'm a big fan of Diamonds Are Forever because it's so ridiculous and it has the, kind of that. Las Vegas fun thing going on, but I really like Goldeneye. Goldeneye is on my list. It yeah. is. It is. It, that was it the was first one I ever saw. So refreshing, after the Roger Moore years, to have that. That don't freshness. forget about the Timothy Dalton error. Uh, yeah, I should. I, I said error there intentionally. It was. I, I it wasn't an error. It was an error. No, I. I, I don't. The, the, he, he was he, no, I don't think so. One no. of the biggest turkeys so. I had on my list was License to Kill because that really oh. killed the franchise for six years. Yeah, Goldeneye it, it was did. the next one after that. I think people really forget about that. Yeah, that it was. Yeah, because they were they were churning them out every two years. Yeah, boom, 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 yeah. and then. No, now they've given work. it a little bit more room with three. I think is what the yeah, pace is. Yeah, and, I, and, and you know, and this rebirth with Casino Royale. Oh, and so then good. Quantum, I wasn't as f fond of Quantum of Solace, but Skyfall was so good, and the whole resolution of the Judy Dench character was. Wonderful. Now, there's an Touching. article I have to recommend to our listeners. It's from now the now defunct website Grantland. It was written last year, December 2014, when Spectre began shooting, and the, the title of it is "Ever Say Never Again" on the or, <laughs> on the history and future of James Bond. Oh, how fun! And it traces this whole British Empire theme, which you were talking about. Yeah. It's very British, and one of the lines that stuck sticks out at me still is, "It's a fantasy in which the empire continued." And yes, that really yes. is. You think about the British Empire, the strongest empire. In the world, 19, what, 15, 1920, 20 years later, completely decimated by World War II. And then this, this, tr this series of movies is almost pretending as if the Empire is still there. Well, they're the ones leading the free right, world exactly. against the, 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 the bad guys of the East. And, and it's their inventiveness, and it's their persistence, and it's their gadgets. Yeah, and the it's their CIA cars doesn't factor and, in much. No, it doesn't, doesn't at all. Well, he, that, he has Felix I, I, Leiter. I, I, in Casino Royale. Oh, all right. By, yeah, I love uh, that. I love that. I and I think that's one of the reasons why it's so much fun because we get to. We've always had a fascination with with the Brits. Yes. And this continues. And 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 you think about in the '60s and and the whole manner in which Sean Connery had a smoothness that was not very American at that time. This is the uh, he it was he was much cooler than we were at that period. Before moment. we get to favorite bonds, mm -hmm. we have to talk about what's your favorite element. Is it martinis? Is it girls? Is it the cars? Is it the gadgets? It's the gadgets. The it's gadgets. All the you. different ways to terrorize someone who's chasing you. <laughs> what about Whether you? it be you know, I would I would nails. throw in the music. Oh yeah, that, that's you know, true. The, Great every point. every film has it has yeah. a theme song, and they're Absolutely. all. That's what many, makes it an many, event. Many, it has the yeah. song, it has yeah. the Bond girl, you know, you get the casting, who's the Bond girl? And then mine's actually going to be, it's like a kind of shared one, it is villains and Russians, yeah. because the villains are usually Russians. Well, it's yeah. like, but I, the, the villains are always my favorite part of the Bond. Yeah, there's <laughs> the, there's the, the whole lot of Lenya, and when she has the brass oh, yes. knuckles. And, oh, yes. Oh, she she's so mean. Uh, I think of the music, and I think of Marvin Hamlish, the late Marvin Hamlish, who was such a marvelous composer, and he he was so thrilled that he got to write a song for a Bond movie. Which one did he do? The Spy Who Loves Me. Uh -huh. Oh, that's yeah. number three Nobody on my list. Nobody does it better. Nobody does it better. Oh, yeah, yeah, great, perfect. great opening yeah, song. It's a great opening song of a not so great movie, but but he just was so excited because this was like an ultimate dream for him to get to write. You for didn't Bond. like The Spy Who Loves Me? Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's one of my it's favorites. Okay. 
The it's opening okay. scene is great. You know, there used to be, there's this whole thing about the Bond girls, it used to be kind of the kiss of death of a career to be a Bond. Wasn't it Barbara Bach who was in that one or no? Uh, I, can't I think she was a, yeah. Yeah, uh, going back to the Bond villains, isn't it safe to say the ones that are kind of turkeys or lame are the ones with not the best villains. You look back at some of the most memorable ones, Goldfinger, great villain. Yeah. Man with the Golden Gun, you've got Christopher yeah. Lee. Mm. Yeah, he Although he good. did say A View to Kill with Christopher Walken isn't one of the best. That's yeah. like an exception to the rule. You you have uh, Javier Bardem in Skyfall. Yeah. Oh, he was excellent. He was superb. He was super In fact, there was a lot of talk in 2012 that he should get nominated Absolutely. For, for an Oscar. And people were saying, an Oscar for a Bond film? No, no, we can't. What about Christoph Waltz? He's oh, two of two he's... at the Oscars. He's the villain this time around, and we'd and, be, and he'll be, he'll we'd be, be in a lot great. of trouble if we didn't mention the great Christoph Waltz. Yeah. I'm very excited to see yeah. him in this movie, and probably my most, the reason why I'm most excited about this movie is because of Christoph Waltz. I just love the rush that it gives. And I think the rush begins with the with how will they do the opening credits, and how will they get into the, into the, into the mood, and... And what um, will I'm sure there'll be a car, a high-speed yeah, car yeah. chase, and maybe. Oh well, it might be a boat. I mean, uh, the commercial I've been seeing lately is with. You know, oh, should, we, should we make a bet on that? Yeah. <laughs> is a car or boat? Yeah. Um, before we go off to our second commercial break, uh, most iconic Bond, most iconic Bond moment. Oh, I, 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 I have to say the piranhas in Thunderball. Yeah. I love the piranhas in Thunderball. And what about actor? Oh, I think I think Sean Connery was was it. He was it. He was so human. Yeah, I can yeah. hear his 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 Scottish uh, accent. Yeah. And what about you, Sally? You well, go I, Connery as well. Connery, I go Connery as well, and I I, I think the um, the the Goldfinger scene with the with the. Uh, no, Mr. Bond, I want you to die. <laughs> Some of my favorite lines of any movie. I have to agree. I job. But I but I love Diamonds Are Forever because it was toward the end of of Sean Connery's run, and. It, it's a film that is so mediocre, it's wonderful. <laughs> and it's so over the top, and, and he's just, uh, he's having great fun. Now, Pierce gets a bad rap, because the last two in his collection of four were not great. But, mm -hmm. as I was telling Sally before the show, true fact, he worked with four different directors on four different I Bond think, movies, and I think whereas was, Roger Moore had the same director right. for every single and Bond And I think movie. that was part of the problem with the, with, with the franchise, is that you felt with each one it was kind of reinventing what it was. Oh, mm -hmm. sure, yeah. And, and the only the only through participation were the producers. And you, you have to have a, a creative connection from the episode to episode. The producers couldn't control the... Yeah, and so yeah. that's why you would have them feel as though they were totally different movies because they were oh, totally different four, movies. Oh, those four, looking back on it, are yeah. the most disjointed four of and, any and of the And especially movies, after GoldenEye had such... Yeah, it really got you. you yeah. Thought, oh, we're back. And then, Another great villain, too, Sean Bean in GoldenEye. Oh, he's, he's great. Oh, he's as, great. Yeah, he's that's great. That, such a memorable role. But, you, but, but it's interesting because at the same time that Bond was trying to find his way, we had the whole Harrison Ford, Patriot Games, Clear and Present Danger that was right. kind of scooting into the same territory. Well, that, those came in right and, during that six and year we had span the born they, right. films. And so yeah. Bond. They've had to get it together to survive because there's nothing that that dies faster than a than a franchise that's irrelevant. That's yeah. been 55 yeah. years yeah. old. Yeah, and they, I mean, my goodness, when you think about, I think about begging my parents to go see Goldfinger when it first came out. And it's really another part of the event aspect of it is going to see it with your family. Like right. I'm going to see it with my dad. I've seen I think probably ten James Bond movies, yeah. if not fifteen, with my dad. And so, oh, that that's really cool. It's like a heart. The heart that, of our you know father son dynamic is James Bond and football <laughs> and all that great that's stuff. Really, that's really cool. Yeah, and that's great. So that suggests that these are manly movies. Oh, of course. <laughs> and going back to the director element too, Sam Mendes is back behind the the lens for this one and for Spectre, and, and I have really high hopes for him because yeah, he did such a great job with Skyfall. And, and, and he's an A-class director. He's an Oscar-winning director. And, and that cred to a franchise elevates the whole thing. And we can't forget Roger Deakins, who is the cinematographer yeah. on Skyfall, nominated for an Oscar. He's not going to be back this time, though, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. James Bond, it's out uh, tonight, right. 8 p.m. Get your tickets, go, Spectre. You can even see it in IMAX, which yeah. would really be big. It's going to be a great very, one. Very, very big. And we're yeah. going to head off to our second commercial break. We'll be back with some weekend events. Thanks, okay. Mark. Here at the Darien Sports Shop, we are very excited about our newly redesigned men's department. Gentlemen, if you're shopping for work, weekend, or wedding, we've got the latest styles and trends inside our spacious new department just for you. 
We have vast selections from Peter Millar, Vineyard Vines, Johnny O, Duckhead, Barber, and so much more. And you can even walk out of the store in the new Wolverine 1000 Mile Men's Boot. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariansport.com. When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. While the temperatures are cooling down, the fall bite is heating up. Albies, Bonita, Blackfish, Alligator Blues, and Stripers are following the large schools of bait that are abundant in the Long Island Sound. If you love the New England coast during autumn, this is the time to be on the water. The latest from Shimano, Quantum, Avet, Hoagie, Phase 2, and more are in stock and ready to go at the dock shop. And don't mind those fall breezes with jackets, hats, gloves, and fleece from Grundens and Stormer. The dock shop will keep you warm and dry. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The dock shop, now in two locations, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. While the temp- and we are back here at HN Network Arts and Leisure. Sally's got some weekend events for us. It's a busy, busy weekend again, and this is like the busiest of the busy weekends. Um, it never stops, really, it, this well, time Well, it never year. stops, but this is one of those, those weekends that's like the super trifecta weekend. Yeah. And one of the things that's happening this weekend are a lot of play openings in the area. We have uh, Mass Appeal, which is opening tonight at Square One in Stratford. And that's running weekends through November 22nd. Um, you can get information about tickets at squareonetheater.com, and their phone number is 203-375-8778. Um, then we have Glen Gary, Glen Ross at the Ridgefield Theater Barn. Oh, wow, that's going to be great. Yeah, that's that's uh, an adult. Based on the play in the movie, I'm assuming. Yeah, and that's a play for adults. Great. Um, that opens Friday night, November 6th. Is Al Pacino going to be there? No? I don't. <laughs> we got him on the list. Uh, tickets are available at ridgefieldtheaterbarn.org, and they open an hour before curtain curtains at eight for the evening shows, so that you can bring a picnic and a bottle of wine and enjoy yourself before the show starts. All the seating is cabaret seating there. I really like that image. Yeah, that's a cool one. Nice group. Um, next coming up is the Nerd, which is going to be opening at uh, DAC stage at the Darien Arts Center. And that's opening also on Friday evening, and that will run through November 15th on weekends. If you want tickets, darianarts.org or call 203-655-5414. We're past uh, Halloween, so it's time to start your Christmas shopping. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Christmas music season started November 1st, last Sunday. Yes, yeah, so we have lots of crafts fairs coming up. Um, Craft Westport is Saturday and Sunday at Staples High School, 70 North Avenue. And oh, yeah, look at that image. Yeah, isn't that a beauty? That's a cute little uh, sculpture by Margaret Wozniak. It looks like Egyptian almost or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, show information is at craftwestport.com, or you can call 845-331-7900. They have more than 175 exhibitors at the show. It's really huge. Uh, if you want a little bit less stress on your uh, wallets, uh, 
or less stress on your, your visual faculties, go to uh, one of these two shows. The Wilton Historical Society American Artisan Show is going to be on the grounds of the Wilton Historical Society at 224 Danbury Road, which is Route 7. And that's going to be Saturday and Sunday. They're going to have 30, about 30 exhibitors there. If you want more information about that show, 203-762-7257. In Ridgefield at Lounsbury House, the American Craftsman Show is Saturday and Sunday, and that's at 316 Main Street, and they have about 30 exhibitors also. And the phone number there is 203-438-6962. And finally, for craft shows, the Fairfield Museum is having a pop-up artisan's market um, that's going to be on Friday from noon to 7 and then Saturday from 10 to 4 there at 370 Beach Road in Fairfield and their phone number is 203-259-1598. Um, coming up at the uh, Quick Center at Fairfield University we have the David Dorfman Dance Company. This is a uh, a modern dance group and they're going to be performing at 8 o'clock on Saturday night at the Quick Center. They're not wearing any shoes. Well. What happened? What happened to their shoes? I think maybe one of them is wearing Well, little, it's modern, so I'm assuming, I'm assuming there's a new style of Yes, dancing. you notice they're not wearing tutus as well. Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe we forgot that part, yeah. Tickets are 45, 35, and 30 and you can get reservations by visiting quickcenter.com or call 1-877-ARTS-ARTS-396. If you get your shopping done early in the holiday season, the Friends and Neighbors of Putman Park and Brigade of the American Revolution will present a celebration of the 237th anniversary of the Revolutionary War encampments in Reading on Saturday, November 7th from 10 to 4. Reenactors will provide for families as they re uh, recreate army life during the Revolution. There will be artillery, uh, and drill demonstrations, battlefield skirmishes, colonial craftsmen, kids drill instructions, army camp life talks, and soldiers at, of Putnam Park program. This That's a mouthful. A, this, is, this is an interesting... Uh, it's an interesting weekend to have an American Revolutionary yeah. reenactment. Well, That's they pretty wanna, cool. I, I don't think it's going to be cold enough to really give you the, the feeling of what it was like. That's this, what they're trying to go was, for. They're um, trying to go for like, the winter feel of it. This was a winter encamp. And yeah. They call this... Um, Connecticut's Valley Forge. Ah, it, was, okay. it was tough going there. Yeah, and then for more information, uh, it's uh, what is it, putnampark.org uh, backslash friends, neighbors, uh, or just brigade.org. It's $5 for adults, $2 for children, or 12 The park is at the intersection of routes uh, 107 and 58. Sounds like it would be a great it's, event. Yeah, it's a beautiful It's park. a family day, really. It it's is a family a, day. Lots it's not just fun. for historians, it's for the whole family. Bring the kids and have a good time. Yep. Get kind of the American Revolutionary feel. Silvermine uh, Art Center in New Canaan afternoon, November 8th. Uh, Peter Petrek, Petrika, Petrochko, I Petrochko, think. Petrochko, New Work and uh, Space Structure and Light, a contemporary glass exhibition. The reception will take place from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, works include uh, some wood, some sculptures uh, that explore pattern, color, texture, and light, ranging from geomet uh, geometrically patterned uh, band sawn vessels to sculpture carved from a single log. Wow, that's a lot of woodwork right yeah, there. Yeah, he works over in Oxford. He's, he's a local <laughs> He must guy. be an interesting artist. Yeah, yeah. The exhibit runs through uh, December uh, 20th. Um, We're showing a bit of, of glass oh, yeah, that, there it is, that right there. Is, is in the show, and, and that's uh, an example of the kind of modern work that people do with glass, which is it's amazingly very, very beautiful, modern. too. Yeah, it's definitely not old. Gallery hours are Wednesday uh, through Saturday, noon to 5, Sunday 1 to 5. Following the Sunday's reception, David Dunlop will give a lecture at 4.30 on arts and architecture, how they influence and interact with each other. Admission is $12 for that event. For more information, visit silvermineart.org Silvermine or call 203-966-9700, extension 20. Yeah, David Dunlop's a great lecturer. He also lectures at the Museum of Modern Art, I think, in New York, or maybe it's the Metropolitan. That's great but that he's, he's coming up and doing well, it Well, he Sullivan. lives in Wilton. Oh, there so. you go. So he's not really going too far. No, no. And then the last event is Celtic Music and Dance. Fiddlers Natalie McMaster and Donald Le 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 well, Leahy yeah, will perform Leahy. at Fairfield yes. University's Quick Center on Sunday, November 8th at 3 p.m. for an afternoon of dancing, singing, and world-class fiddling. There is nothing like fiddling. Yeah, I was going to say, that sounds like a, a fun way to spend your Sunday. Yeah. Uh, the show is called Visions from Cape Breton and Beyond, a Celtic family celebration. 
$5 and $40. For reservations, visit quickcenter.com or call 1-877-ARTS-396. Yes, I have to say there are nothing like Cape Breton fiddlers. They're the best. Yeah. Yeah. Really and sets the mood. We're going to wrap it up with just a suggestion for next week, which is um, the Disney animated film Fantasia is going to be shown at the Ridgefield Playhouse on Tuesday night, November 10th at 7 o'clock. Sounds like a great way to spend your Tuesday night. Great, great animated film. They've remastered it, and they're showing it in, in selected theaters right now. I don't know if this is just in, in preparation for selling another uh, DVD of it or, or what the plans are. Oh, I'm sure the there'll be another are. DVD coming. But anyway, tickets are $15. It's and the holiday season. Of course there'll be another a DVD coming. Of course. RidgefieldPlayhouse.org or 438-5795. Thank you so much for watching today's show. Uh, that's all the arts and entertainment we've got for you. And there's lots more. There's lots more online at arts.org.